What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, change my mind, I'm doing it differently. <laughs> right, to explain. Um, all this is just getting mocked up in three quarter inch tube. Because I've got enough to have one stab at doing the proper jobby. <laughs> So I'm just goofing about with this stuff just because then I can see it and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, this is the original one that I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all right. However, there are things that I don't really like about it and stuff that I do like about it. I like it's a really simple shape. Just real like plain Jane because everything else on this bike is going to be real simple too. Um, however, there is some stuff that I don't like. I don't like the height that this back bit comes up. I don't like that at all. And in order to correct it, I was thinking about chomping a, a chunk out of here, putting a plug in, dropping it all down and sort of, you know, narrowing the gap up basically. Um, but the distance there where I would chop it and the distance there where I'd chop it is different. So essentially by sticking this bit on that bit without that bit in the middle, it's going to narrow the seat up just because that's, you know, less than that basically. Um, I was also being honest, and my, my butt is bigger than that. <laughs> Just a little bit. There's pasties for you, isn't it? Um, so really I want it to be a little bit wider, but I st and I want it to have more of a, a crook that I can get my me, get me leg into when I'm in a corner and stuff. So although it is a really nice, simple, straightforward design and it was food for thought, it made me think about loads of other stuff and I've changed it. We're now doing this. Well, we're nearly doing this. I'm moving these down a bit. <laughs> so um, I've got all my measurements and everything else and the degrees and I don't know, can you see? It's all written on the back here basically, just so I can mimic it when I do the real one. Um, but what I did was I changed that from 140 degrees to 120 degrees. And then I've kept everything else basically the same. So this bend, it's clocked over at 70 degrees and bent at 54. I've got a gap and then a 12 degree bend for these bits here to start it necking in. But I'm probably going to move them down to about here just because there, there is going to be a seat hump there, a little one, and then it's going to curve out like this in the seat. And that just makes it the very back of the seat that's going to be white. So that needs to move down a little bit. And then I'll neck it in. Um, to the front and if I need to I might sort of put a little curve there so it comes back out to meet the frame just because I really do like that idea but that's what I'm doing I've had it on the fab table laid it all flat it doesn't rock or there's no high corner or anything else so you know I'm happy it's all flat and the way that I'm doing it is working but that's it um, it's still going to have like a 13 degree incline here and it does you know it's all dead flat when you look at the sides so you're just going to see, from the side view, you're just going to see a straight tube. But, for practicality's sake, I'm going to have a slightly wider seat. It's got a little bit of a shape to it. And that's going to do the do, I think. Um, but if you look at it, just literally, just changing that from 140 to 120 is dropped. That, um, you can see how much it's dropped it up here, just because of the bend. If I can get it straight. I'm doing this all cack handed, isn't I? But like the, the difference in height between that and that is actually quite a lot. And I quite like the height of that. That's, you know, it's not silly looking anymore. And I can have the hump come up at the back and then flatten out and then go into the seat. And I think we're going to be gold. So that's what I'm doing. I just need to move those bends down and, you know, we'll, you know, we'll just sort of go from there. So, um, I'm quietly confident I could have a stab at doing this in inch. And I can blag this bit as we go. Because I will just be blagging it in this stuff anyway, but you know, why waste another bit of tube? So we're going to have a go at doing it in inch after I've had a cuppa. Right, so he wants to be 120. 120 degrees. Right, so this is the tube that I'm using. Um, that's what it did look like. The surface rust that stuff picks up in here is ridiculous, which is why the bike is all getting primed. And I'm just doing that on everything now. Um, so this isn't going to be a how-to at all, but I am going to walk you through how I'm doing this, just so you kind of get the process that I'm following, basically. Um, so we've cut a length off, which is 190 long, 
um, centimetres obviously and I've just marked a halfway point and that's going to be the start of my first bend. Now because it's in the halfway point and that is the start of the bend um, it means that one end is going to be longer. So if I was to bend this side round, well, that end's going to end up longer and I'm going to need to chop off something about that long, I'm, I'm guessing, ish, something like that. Um, which is okay because I've, <laughs> that is all I've got left of this tube once I've done this bit. So, you know, I've got to get this one right for a start. And then that and the other bit that I chop off is the only thing I've got left to do the bracing that I want to put underneath it. It's going to be quite short, I get all that, but, you know, if I haven't got enough, I'm just going to have to order some more of this stuff and we'll, you know, do it at a later point. I want to get as much done as possible. So that's going to be the start of my bend. All right, let's get him loaded. Um, and we'll stick 120 degree bend in it. So, any angles that I'm doing, I like to check just, you know, th there is a certain amount of spring back and stuff, and it is just increments on a dial that you're, you're going to there. It's never going to be exactly accurate. Well, actually, you can go that side. But, I like to check all this sort of stuff, purely because if, if I haven't bent it exactly right, I'm going to need to correct something later on. I can put this back in and put a bit more of a bend into it, but I don't like doing it just because sometimes you think it's all sat down right and nicely and it just ain't. So, you know, the, the bend up sort of ends up being a little bit wonky. So, all I do is I've got two heavy bits of steel, um, which I'll just put on the outside faces of that. Turn him on, zero him. And then we'll stick him in there gently so nothing moves and see what angle we got. So that came up as 121. Okay, a little bit off, but that's fine, it don't really matter. At least I know, it's if it's massively off, like you haven't taken into account the spring back or something like that, that's when you need to start correcting things. So next bit is I need to find out the start and finish point of these bends. Um, I have got a start marker there for the start of the bend. However, oh, the bend tends to start a little bit after that. So I tend to ignore that mark and I just double check it from here sort of thing. So I just put a straight edge up against it on the outside in the middle of the tube. And from where the daylight starts, that's basically the start and stop points on your bend. So that's about there. And this one, it's not far off. A couple of mil, something like that. But this is quite thick wall stuff, so, you know, thinner stuff is, is quite a bit different. So yeah, that's right there. And that's right there. Okay, so from there, where's where's my other one that I did? Hang on. Right, so from my mock-up, we're going 100 mil. So from that mark, we'll stick another one on at 100 mil, which is there. there. Um, so this one is going to want to go that way so he needs to be, extend that line down there just so I can see it. Same thing on this one. All 
Okay, so that's going to be the start of my next bend, which is going to be 54 degrees, but we're going to have to clock it over at 70 degrees, because if I just bend it on the same plane, these bits are going everywhere. Those of you that watch me do the frame build will know I cock that up twice, so I'm being careful now. Right, next bit. Right, and I'm going to do it this way around because it looks a bit awkward with all this sticking up here, but because that stand is in the way, um, if I tried doing this bit first with that bit sticking down there, it's just going to clobber into the stand. So, that's why we're doing it like this. So let's get him on his mark. A little bit more. Right, so he's on his mark. We'll nip this down. And set the angle. So I took a reference off this already. Uh, this is just one of them digital protractor jobbies. So you stick it that way on the die and that way on the die. And this gets set up as zero. Um, it is 0 0.05 degrees out, but that's the closest I can get, which is fine. Um, we'll stick him on like that. And then I've got to clock this to 70 degrees. Um, so we go that way. Eighty one. Come on, seventy one point two. Seventy point three five. Bit too far. Who's fiddly doing all this? Because you're trying to get it absolutely cock on because you don't want any wobble to it. Right, we're 0.05 out. That's good enough. Right, so I'll nip him up there so he's not going anywhere. And then I'm bending it to 54 degrees. So put some preload on, make sure that's on zero, which it is. Might even move my handle out for this. Nah. All right, so 54 degrees. checking it there is a tiny bit of a difference here you probably see a little bit of daylight underneath this arm so I've not bent these exactly the same I think I got 54 on there but obviously I am a tiniest little bit out I mean you're talking like a fraction of a degree but from where it's resting on the bottom here to the end there it's up by about five mil so I'm probably going to stick it back in the bender and we're going to bend this one a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more and see if we can't get it on. Um, and that was the first one that I did, so he has to go in that way. Alright, I've got it closer. There's about a mil difference. Um, I'm going to get it much better than that. So, let's uh, do the start and stop bend thing. I hate putting it back in because I, I just, in my head, it's really hard, like really hard, um, to get it in exactly the same place again. So that's about there. About 
ね。ね。You can see a little scuff line on here as well. Right, so we're then gonna go. So we want 120, but I want to lengthen this because I want to make that bit a bit bigger. Let me just have a look on the bike and see how much longer. Right, so we did go, what was it, 120. I want it to come down to about there before it kicks in, I think. So. Roughly 230 ish. 220, 230. Um, how much does that stick in? Right. This is the bit where we're blagging it. <laughs> we're going to go 230, I think. Um, Two thirty. And we're going flat, aren't we? So Right, so now it is a 12 degree kick in, but I think it's going to be a little bit more than that because we've moved the bend that way. Um, right, I need to have a guess at that then. Right, so about there is where it's going to join the frame. About there. So, um, I've marked it off on both sides here. That's 205, 205. And across there it wants to be down to 250, centre to centre. We're currently at 320. Okay, so it needs to come in a fair bit. So there's a couple of ways that I could do this. Um, I could mark it out on here. So like, put a mark on there for the inside, a mark on there for the inside. Measure that, which is 295. So that would be my center point. And we want it to come in to about there. That's 250, less half that. So basically it needs to come into this point. So that inside edge needs to marry up to there. So then I can take my digital protractory jobby thing, stick that on a straight edge, aim it at that point, and that tells me about, hang on, is that right? No, zero. So, centre of the pivot point to that bit. Nine degrees ish. The other way I could do it is with trigonometry. So, I'm going to do that and see what that comes up with, but we're probably looking somewhere around the nine degree marker. Right, so I've got me, got me a little kink in it here as well. It just means my butt's going to be there on the wide bit rather than the skinnier bit. Um, so if I put this in off to one side, both sides should touch the tube. So both sides are touching the frame. So that means I can move it over to the center and it's going to land nicely in the middle. Um, he's going to go up to about like that. I reckon we're in. I reckon we're in. So, that's the basic 
that's the basic shape done. Like that. But it's all nice and flat from that way. If you get my, well, apart from that end. <laughs> so all I've got to do is uh, I'll measure the, yeah, I'll find the end of this bend and the end of that bend and I'll measure it off to the same distance there, cut it off um, and all bar a cope, which is basically in I think, so we can stick it on the bike and see what it looks like. And I'm hoping it comes out okay, because this is the only bit of tube I've got. <laughs> right, let's do that. Right, I think we're in, I think we're in. I will get a picture of the bike and just show it upside profile because it's hard to do like this. However, if you look at it from the back again, you've still got that shape there where it all kind of lines up with the tank and everything else, which is quite cool. Um, it's sort of, you know, it is a little bit wider than the rear tire, which I'm happy with. That's all, that's all good and cushy. And if you look down from the top, um, you can see how it all sort of necks in a little bit as well. So I get that little bit in there to put my knee, which I'm quite happy with. From the side, it is all nice and flat. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so obviously we were about a mil out along this bend here, but by the time I've shortened it up, that's less than a mil. You ain't gonna notice anyway. I'll probably put more of an error in that than you know when I weld it. <laughs> but again, from the front, it's all quite cool. Little cheeky bit of hump sticking up the top there, which will be nice once it's all done. Um, as far as the, the side stays go, what I'm thinking, because I need to put a brace in here basically, and I wanted to try and, I'm sorry, you can't see, but need to have a brace in there. And I wanted to try and follow that line if I possibly could. Um, and sort of, you know, cope it in the same as I did sort of around here. So I'm thinking something as simple as that. Just really, really, really simple. But I can follow that line straight up to the frame, give it a bit of bracing. This is all quite tough stuff anyway. And it'll all be dressed and, you know, exactly the same as the rest of the frame is done. So it'll all be sort of, you know, all this will be filled in and finished off nicely and dressed in. Same thing down here, where obviously that bit joins on and up the top here as well. Um, this is basically where I'm going to be parking it too. So there is going to be a tube that goes across the side there. I am probably going to need to get some more. And I'm probably going to do it out of some of that thinner stuff as well. This is quite chunky. This is like three mil thick. So I don't really want to put a shed load of weight in the back of it. And it'd also be nicer to have slightly narrower tubing because um, that way I've got something to run cabling and all that sort of stuff under as well. So there'll probably be one there and there'll be another one back here. Um, and all this will obviously get plated in. So that's basically what I'm thinking. That is going to be my seat frame. That's it. Ha -ha. Welded myself into a corner here. 
This is brilliant. Um, to get the jack out, I need to pull that lever up. However, when I pull that lever up, that bit goes up. And it was resting on that when I tacked it in place. <laughs> oh, okay, it's only lightly tacked on. I don't want it coming off. There we go. That could have been bad. Right. Right, so we're just basically tacked on. It's not wobbling, it's not going anywhere. It's just I want everything out of the way so I can have a proper look. The gaps is all right there and it is smack in the middle as well. I had um, two bits of uh, box section which I clamped through the wheel. I know I'm clamping down on rubber so, you know, could be a little bit of deflection and stuff, but it's way better than just doing it by eye. Uh, and I measured the gap from, you know, they, they were both level and I measured the gap from there to me marks on the frame, which is the start of this bend here and that's all fine. And just eyeballing it, it looks cock on in the middle. Like, properly dead nuts, ain't gonna get any better than that type in the middle. Um, so I'm happy with that. So now all I've got to do is figure out my little side braces. I can get them tacked in, and then once everything is all tacked together, then I can start welding it. Um, but I don't really want to pour loads of heat into it when it's just being held at one end like this. I want to get those side bits in. So where do I put them? Um, I've got another little chunk of this over there, as you saw. It does need cleaning up but it will do the do. Um, and I'm thinking like that, basically. So this one will be long enough. That one won't be. <laughs> but then I can follow this line up here. And it just gives it a clean look. And because this steps out and then it comes back in again, I can't, it's, it's sort of slightly doing that here where it will join up and then it tucks in again at the front. So it's going to give it a bit more strength as well. I'm happy with that. Right, actually, I'm not going to be able to follow this line up here, purely because the shot gets in the way. Um, that is directly in the way and it will clout it. So what I'm going to do is follow this engine bracket. I'm going to bring it up a bit shorter. This bit here is going to be a strong point anyway, so we're going to come off the top end of that to this mark that I've got on each side, and that is how I'm going to do it, I think. Just that way I clear the shock. I didn't think of that. Right. Well, that's the first one in. I think that's going to be all right, actually. What I'm trying to do is follow this line, sort of, you know, continue it up there, because it's going to be all the same colour, isn't it? So it's going to, you know, it's all going to blend in, I think. Um, it is only tacked on, like I say. Um, I could have it off again if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I quite like that. You know how I said I was going to get this done and f finished today? I ain't, <laughs> I've just run out of time. Um, basically, um, Erin Dawes has got some other stuff that she's got to get done, so I've got to go home and cook a roast dinner and feed the 5,000 that's coming round. Um, so I need to chip off and get that done. What is the time? 20 to three. I started in here, I suppose, half 10-ish. So I haven't made bad progress, really. I mean, you know, it's on, it's tacked, I'm happy with it, I know what I'm doing, I've just got some bracing to put in and then weld it all up and dress it up. So they're going to be the jobs for this week. 
but I really did want to get it done. I really wanted to get it done. Um, but just time's against me today. By the time you like this YouTube thing, right? I'm going to do a video on all this actually. But by the time you've set up cameras and set up the shots and done your bit and then shifted it and said what you're going to say to the camera and then wheeled all the kit out that you're going to need and set all that up and get set up to do it and then actually do it, it just takes ages. There's, um, you know, time literally just flies. What, sh what should really be, I don't know, two and a half hour job to at least get it all cut and tacked in place and you just got to do all the finish welding. I reckon two and a half hours I'd have that done. Um, but it's, it's just, it drags it out so much. But anyway, less and more moaning, because <laughs> I've got to get going. Um, I really wanted this to be an old school looking calf race. Well, no. Well, I did. But no. <laughs> so, First and foremost, I want to make a good looking bike that is safe and fun to ride. That's it. That's the main goals. As long as it looks the part and it's, you know, it's nicely done and finished off and all that sort of stuff, it's safe and you get where you're going with a grin on your face, then I'm happy. That's, you know, job well done in my book. However, I was aiming to try and build an old school looking calf racer. And the more I build it, the further away from that I'm getting. I like what I'm doing. I do like it. I love the way it's turning out. But it ain't going to be old school looking. And I just started out wrong, basically. Um, I was going back looking. I quite often go back and have a look at um, Andy's mo motorcycle obsessions, you know, when he did Basket Case. And if you look at that bike, it's got everything it needs. It's got, you know, like the spoked wheels and stuff. And it's a skinny frame. It's not a chunky frame like this. And, you know, I've got a monoshock. And, you know, it just, I'm never going to be able to make it look old school. It's going to have a nod to the old school with certain bits and bobs and whatnot, but it ain't going to look like an old school looking thing. Like all the fixings are going to be hidden because I don't like fixings on show <laughs> where I can help it anyway. Um, there's going to be a few, but most of them I'm just going to try and squirrel away. Whereas on like the old calf races, and so you can see everything. Every nut, bolt and washer is all out there to see. Um, but this isn't going to be like that. Um, it is going to be clean and simple looking and all that lot. And it will have a nod to an old school bike, but it ain't going to look like an old school bike. Not at all. So, I cocked that one up a bit, didn't I? <laughs> and it's not like it bikes is the only thing I've got going on in here either. I'm looking for it. Well, I'll, I'll just add it. I'm halfway through making a thing. What, oh, here we go. So, this is for Chuck. It is a work in progress. It's not quite finished because I've got some Ulster stick in it. But this is also what I've been making. So, uh, where are we? Right, can you see? Where are you? There you go. So, this is just going to be a tailstock um, die holder. So, like when I'm using Chuck over there, if I've turned something down, I want to stick a thread on it. That's where this job is going to come in because it, it will just keep everything concentric. So it takes a one inch die in there. Um, that obviously goes in there. There will be a spring on this, but that end fits in there so it will be sprung loaded in essence. And this bit goes into the drill chuck. So, you know, I can shove a die in there give it a bit of preload on this it will bottom out on that if i just want to wind it in anyway and then i can just spin this round um and cut my thread on it and have it all straight and not crooked and not bend anything um i do still need to stick some holes in here which i need to put some grub screws in just to hold the die in place but that's another thing that i've been doing <laughs> that took quite a while um trouble is i had to make it because i'm going to need it soon because i've got some other stuff i need to make but anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for this one. Um, I, I really wanted to get it done, but it, you know, like I say, time's just against me, so it ain't happening. But I will get it done during the week, and I'll bring you along for the ride on that one. And we will see you very soon. So thank you ever so much for watching. I do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Layers.